Hi. And I'm glad to see that you're interested in a penetration test and want to understand the risks that penetration test may expose you to. Now, I want to be very clear. We're not talking about the risks the penetration test may find. What we're talking about is a topic that a lot of people worry about and sadly, many people in the industry don't discuss, right? And as you're evaluating penetration testing companies, uh, security consulting companies, this is one of the questions you should say is, hey, when you're testing me, what problems do you see? And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the generic problems, <clears throat> but every industry has issues that may be specific to that industry. So that's a further thing that, that may be father, further articles later. One of the first things that you have to worry about is system outages. Look, here at Secure Ideas and at many other consulting firms, we hire people who have lots of experience in testing. We also hire people, uh, same people, that have lots of experience managing and running and building the types of systems we're testing. So we hope that while breaking things is what we do, right? We're finding the hacks, the exploits, the vulnerabilities, the whatever, right? Um, we may break something that we're not supposed to or that we didn't want to, right? And you'll hear the stories. Oh man, I took down a network. Oh man, I crashed a domain controller, right? Um, that does happen. And there's lots of reasons that it could happen. Um, one, and the thing that is probably the most common is unusual or unexpected circumstances. And I don't mean, oh man, I thought they were running Active Directory and they were really running blah, 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 whatever. What we're talking about is we don't know your systems. We don't know how you've configured things, how you're working stuff. And we are trying to find out, right? As part of our mapping, our reconnaissance, um, one of the goals is to figure out how things are set up and how they're configured. But we're gonna find things that aren't really what we expected or aren't really what is normal. And that may cause an outage. Uh, one example, <clears throat> we were doing a test of a retail organization and they had a device that was near its end of life. And I don't mean based on support, I mean as in the hardware was failing. And as we were testing, we performed a type of test that should never cause a problem. But because of this one device, it actually caused an outage at some of the locations for that retail location. That's a problem. I'd like to say we should have known, or we should have prevented it, but the reality is the testing we were doing shouldn't have caused that problem. So it was an unusual circumstance. That doesn't excuse it, doesn't make it okay that we crashed that system, but it happens. Um, another thing that I'd rather not talk about, but we really should, is that some penetration testers are just reckless. Now, their recklessness may be that they like attacking stuff, and that's why they got into the field. Um, their recklessness may also be that they don't really understand the systems they're testing or the tests they're doing, right? Uh, here at Secure Ideas and at other uh, penetration testing companies that we recommend, um, we work to not have that inexperience or inattentiveness from our consultants, right? Um, we wanna ensure that you don't have this problem, but it could happen. So let's at least mention the fact that it could happen, okay? As you're talking to your penetration testing vendor, as you're evaluating them, uh, this is one of the questions you should ask is, hey, how do you handle unusual or unexpected circumstances. How do you handle inattentiveness? You should already know how we handle inexperience. We don't hire those people. But <laughs> how do we handle the fact that, you know, we're busy, things are going on, life is happening, right? Another thing that is a risk that you should worry about is inadvertent exposure. Now, 
we are looking for vulnerabilities and we're trying various exploits, right? Um, <clears throat> are we exposing more than we should? Um, I was working on a test once and I found a web backdoor injected into an application. Now, as we'll talk about in other articles, right? If we see signs of compromise, indicators of compromise, we stop testing, we contact the customer. So I did, I stopped testing, I contacted the customer and said, hey, I see something bad here. I've found a web backdoor, it's in your application, right? They went into incident response mode. Uh, let's contain this. I was working with them while we don't do incident response Right, we provide advisory services. I was working with them. It turned out that this web backdoor was a backdoor that the previous pen testers had added to the system. They found an exploit that allowed them to upload uh, a document uh, that was executable, um, and they put the backdoor in. But they didn't limit the backdoor to only their IP addresses or what have you. Right, so they actually had added exposure to the application that they shouldn't have added. Right, another type of exposure like this is um, transferring sensitive data or PII or PHI or whatever other scary acronym you want us to use over an unencrypted channel. Now, sometimes that's because the pen tester messed up. Right, they connected to a system, they didn't think about encryption, and they did it over an unencrypted channel. Other times it's because of the system, right? I've had it happen. I've been testing an application that doesn't support HTTPS and found sensitive data. When I found the sensitive data, I was able to see it and that meant I had actually transferred that PII over an unencrypted channel. I didn't mean to, right? That's a problem. So how do you mitigate this? Well, first, as we talk about all the time, uh, make sure that as you're evaluating organizations that you're talking to competent and experienced teams, right? Even if they're using junior or consultants, if they also have an experienced consultant doing the testing with them, supervising that work, that may be okay, right? Now, I do want to call out, when we say an experienced consultant supervising and working with them, we mean actually supervising and working with them, not just being the face during the sales pitch, <laughs> right? Um, second, make sure that you have good communication with the team. Talk to them about what they're doing. Get regular updates. Understand what vulnerabilities are found and what they're doing with those vulnerabilities, right? Another risk that you have is that the penetration test could mask other attacks. Now, we don't mean um, that the pen testers are doing something that hides a real attacker. What we mean is that very often during a penetration test, uh, your SOC or your NOC or your MSSP that is monitoring stuff for you is told to disregard alerts, right? Well, if they're blanketly told disregard alerts, how do you know that the attackers have taken that time off, right? Um, now, we're, we run into this problem a lot because people believe that they want to keep the pen test secret, right? Um, because they don't want attackers, uh, the SOC to know the test is happening so that they can test the SOC. What we say is, that's fine if that's what you want to do, but make sure that you're in the path of that alert, right? So that we, you see that what's happening and you're able to stop it before it escalates to calling the FBI or something like that, right? Um, we, we also say that it's nice to start the test, evaluating response time and things like that. And then once a day or two has gone on, um, now notify the SOC fully and let them work with the consultants. We talk about in other articles about ride-along pen testing and, and evaluating both the blue and the red side. Um, it, it, it makes a much better test. Another risk is loss of productivity, right? Um, even if we're not talking about a complete outage, sometimes uh, you'll have the problem where it will interfere with employee productivity. Uh, for example, we have some man-in-the-middle attacks that we'll do that 
could prevent users on a certain subnet from getting to the internet or to uh, a system, right? Uh, or because we're doing a pen test, we may cause odd behavior that a DevOps team or your admin teams will waste time troubleshooting, okay? So while we will expect some loss of productivity, right, and that's just something that you deal with, right, um, making sure that you inform teams will help reduce that, right? Letting people know that the pen test is happening and what it's doing, uh, what it's targeting, right, is critical. Another thing that we want to point out is that very often while we're doing a penetration test, uh, IT teams and other teams within the organization won't want to engage with the pen testers at a fear that they're bothering us or causing problems. They're not. Now, I want to be very clear. That type of communication has to be approved. Uh, we need to make no upfront that who's allowed to, to reach out to us. Um, anybody can ask us questions, uh, but we're not just going to answer those questions to random Joe Schmo uh, employee, okay? But work with us on that, and they'll learn stuff, we'll learn stuff, everything will work well. Another issue is false negatives, right? Um, we're going to test stuff, and we're going to miss things. I, I'd like to tell you that we're not. I'd like to tell you that we're amazing and we find all the vulnerabilities. But that is not true, right? Um, we have a time frame. We also have a scope, right? Um, in that time frame, in that scope, we may miss things, and you just need to understand that. Uh, we try very hard to, to clarify what we've tested, document what's going on, and explain that just because we didn't find a vulnerability doesn't mean you're perfectly safe from that, right? So keep that in mind. And then one of the problems that we see in the industry, sadly, is that there are people with questionable motives, right? Um, and we see them at pen test companies. I'd like to say that Secure Ideas doesn't have anybody like that, um, but you never know. Something could happen, right? Um, and so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you talk to your vendor and ensure that they're doing criminal background checks, that they understand who is doing the work that you know who is doing the work and if they subcontract make sure one that you're okay with that and two if you are okay with that that you've approved who they're subcontracting to right and you should be evaluating that subcontractor to the same level that you were evaluating the original pen test company you were looking at these are just some of the risks that you're gonna run into um, but they're the main ones. I appreciate your time. I hope this article is helpful. As you look through things, uh, you may want to read about preparing for a pen test. You may even want to read uh, our sample deliverables and how our process for pen testing works, right? I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much.